Hey, what's happening everybody? This is your man, Robert the Leather Cowboy Muhammad, right here at Premier Leather Crafters in the Dirty South to where I am enjoying 50 degree weather, finally, for a chance, but it's going to storm tonight. So, and then it's going to get down to like the 20s with the wind chill factors factoring in. Uh, you know, meteorologists are saying it's going to be in the single digits. But for a leather crafter like myself and like you guys, it's prime time to be in the lab doing some work, getting your perfecting and, and polishing up on your craft. Now, it's been a minute since I've done one of these videos because I was uh, down over the Christmas season getting orders out. As uh, now we're going into the income tax season. So even though with the government shut down, don't let that stop you from grinding and making your money. Even if you don't have a lot of customers calling and asking for product, you know, still go in the lab and perfect on your craft. Work on your craft. That's what these videos are set up to do is to help you guys get some new tips, some new information to help perfect your craft. Now, um... There are several things that I want to cover. Uh, so I'm getting back in the saddle and doing the videos again. A lot of things that I picked up over the time that I was shut down, you know, and, and not shut down, but the time that I was off uh, YouTube doing videos, uh, some things that I have some valuable insight and tips. So which brings me to this video here. And I want you guys to follow me with this because if, if you've been crafting for... Even if you've been crafting for a week or a few days, you have ran into this problem and the cowboy is here to fix that problem for you as well as, as always, save you some money on the front end so you can maximize your profits on the back end and it will just make your work pop. So let's get off into this real quick. And I'm going to ask you a question. Have you ever been working on a project? The tooling work is precise. The tooling work is precision. The carving work is immaculate. The, you, you have everything on the face, face uh, uh, of your product, the surface of your product, perfect. And you get to the point that you're ready to dye your edges or you're getting ready to the point to where you're ready to ready to mend your two pieces of leather. Uh, this happens a lot well, when you're doing belts. Uh, if you guys are making your belts like I'm making my belts, I do have a two-part belt. At one point in time, I was an advocate and a completely against a two-part belt. It just made it... Um, it reminded me of the stuff that you buy from Walmart, you know, with the two pieces and then you got the cardboard in the middle, but hey, I'll get to that in another video. Or even if you're making holsters, purses, dot bags, wallets, whatever the case may be, when you get ready to burnish and edge those two pieces together to make it look like one solid piece, and you're getting ready to put your edge coating on. Now, generally, and when I first started taking the classes um, several years ago now, um, on getting my, putting my uh, edges down, I always was fascinated by some of the crafters, man, because you couldn't even tell it was two pieces that was put together. And those guys was really doing a serious job on burnishing. Now, I did another video on burnishing to where... Um, I'm going to show you the product, and I still use this stuff today. It's the Solaris Solaris Burnishing Ink. I still use it. Big, huge bottle. Uh, you can't buy these in Tandy anymore now, so now you have to go to their website and buy them. Uh, and they come in your, your basic colors. Uh, they come in brown uh, and black. Uh, I don't know if they come in any other color. This is the only color that I was really interested in was the browns and the blacks. So I still use this. But Tandy has their own, um, well, Phoebings has their own edge coat. And this comes in brown and black as well. But that's not what the video is about. It's, um, not per se. The video is about when you're getting ready to edge. Now, generally, you would take a wool dauber. 
And these come in three different sizes, depending on what craft supply place you're getting these from, but they come in three different sizes, a small, medium, and a large. This is a medium here. Now, I buy the mediums, and what I would usually do would take my lighter, and I would burn all the little hairs and fringes off to get it to a nice size, and then I would edge the edges of my pieces or what I was working on. And then I'd go back with my burnishing wheel, um, or if you guys are fortunate enough, um, if you have your burnishing um, tool here, uh, or you can use the wheel. I use several ones. I have the, the nylon kind too. Just depending on what project I'm working on. But anyway, uh, you will get ready to put your edge down. Now, the problem that I mentioned earlier, or the question that I mentioned earlier, was, and I'm going to sacrifice a wool dauber just to show you guys, especially for you crafters who are in the leather community. Uh, some of you who's in the leather world may know this little trick or little tidbit already. Uh, but And you guys know, like, some, well, I won't say you know like I know, but sometimes as a crafter, some of your more experienced crafters don't reveal some of the little small intricate secrets to making your work look phenomenal because they want to keep that uh, little thing to themselves. But hey, look, I believe in each one. Teach one, everybody. It's enough pie to eat for everybody. But here we go. I'm going to show you guys this. And I'm going to show you. I'm going to tilt my camera. Hopefully that it won't fall off. I broke the camera over the holidays. Uh, so I'm just going to try to angle this just a little bit to where you can see what I'm doing. But generally you would take your wool dauber. And you would uh, first with this edge coat. And let me give you guys this little tidbit here on the edge coat. Do not shake ever your edge coat. Never shake edge coat. Don't do this little number right here. You're supposed to stir it with something. That's why I'm just gently just swirling it around in the bottle just to get the sedatives and the stuff out of the bottom. You guys can see that. Uh, where, it's a, where it starts to settle in the bottom, all of your sediments and stuff in the bottom. So we just want to swirl this around. You're supposed to stir it. Stir it. I'm working on my, my grammar as well. Taking some classes too to improve my speech and with this thing. You know, my country slang, it gets in the way sometimes. But I'm going to stir that up. And I'm going to take a dauber. And this is the thing that I want to show you guys. It doesn't matter if you Put the whole dauber in, just the tip of the dauber. This problem is going to happen, or it already has happened to you guys. And let's get this right. and get away from the light a little bit because I want you to see what the problem is. Now, I just want to do the edge. And you guys can see, sometimes... You just want to do the edge, but it will bleed over onto your work. There is nothing that will piss a crafter off more, I don't believe, than you're almost at the finish line and your legs give out on you. You can see the finish line. You can see it. You're almost there. And then this happens. Now, some crafters would excuse that. And they'll say, ah, you know. But listen here, people. When you're charging the prices that we charge, and then generally after you put your edge coat on, you, you'll go back with your polishing wheel or your burnishing wheel, and you'll buff that to a nice high gloss to mend those two pieces together where it'll look just like one solid piece. That's all well and good. And you can do all the burnishing in the world that you want to. It still doesn't take away from this mishap of your burnishing ink creeping over the surface of your piece. See that? See that? But until today, and I'm going to show you guys this, and this is very inexpensive. Super inexpensive. Actually, it's more economical than buying a bag of wool daubers. Very economical, more economical than buying a bag of wool daubers because these little jewels right here have been around forever. And you guys can already see I use them. 
You can go to Dollar Tree, Dollar General, get a whole box, maybe a hundred, two, three hundred for a dollar. A Q-tip, boys and girls. A Q-tip is what's going to set your work apart. Let me get refocused again. A Q-tip, and don't mind my poster board, my, my cardboard back here. Uh, I bought an airbrush kit. That's another video. Um, but a Q-tip, a Q-tip is going to set your work apart, guaranteed, and is just going to do the edge like it's supposed to be, just doing the edge. So now, and I'm going to show you guys this. This is the first one that we did. Even though it didn't bleed over as much, but if you are a newer crafter in the leather community, this will happen to you. And it's frustrating. Very frustrating. So, down with that one, I'm going to show you a new one. And I'm going to show you exactly what is happening with the Q-tip. Now, the great part about the Q-tip is, straight out the bat, and we're just going to moisten this tip. That's why you see me putting it in my mouth and just I'm just rolling it on the tongue just to get the little hairs or the little fillers to lay down because cotton will do that. It's actually a little bit worse than the wool daubers, but actually let me just get a new one. That one has been used for a little while. And I went and bought a whole box of these, man, and I keep them and put them all in the bag. I'll tell you guys about the cotton balls later. And another video, but we're just gonna take the tip and just gonna roll it around on your tongue just to even out the little hairs. If you can see that and then see the other one, you see the little fuzzies? That's why you wanna just take your tongue and moisten them down to get the little fuzzies off. No fuzzies here. Now, then we're gonna come right back with the same edge coat. And I'm just gonna put about that much in there. That's all I need. It's more controlled. And you're going to get just the edge with this. We need to put a little bit more on there. And I want, I want you guys to see this while I do it so you can know. And I'm going to turn the flesh side or the grain side out. So you can see that it won't, look at that. You can see the difference between this, these two, look at that. You see the difference? And I'm trying to lean this back so I want you guys to see it. I don't want you to think that I'm doing this number right here. So watch this, I'm gonna lean it back and bring it up to the camera. You see that over bleed? But now look at this one. Ah, I want you to really see it. There we go, huh? The difference with just a Q-tip, with just a Q-tip, and it's just on the edge, just on the edge. That is the difference between a good project, and then you'll come right back with your polishing wheel or your burnishing tool, and you, you got it, and you're just gonna polish that right on up and get it out the gate. Again, this is one of those tip videos to where I'm going to let that, because I'm going to use that Q-tip again. And you don't have to worry about a lighter and burning off the little fillers with the lighter on a wool dauber. All you need is a Q-tip and your tongue to just lay those little fillers down. Let's get refocused. And just to lay those fillers down, and you're going to come right back and put that right on the edge there. Look at there. No over, no over it. There it is. No over it. Killer right there. That's the business. The difference. So with that, I'm going to let you guys get to practicing, get to work. And hey, drop me a comment. Let me know how it works for you. Drop me a comment down in the bottom, and don't forget, subscribe to the page. There's going to be a lot more videos coming out. I have a lot more information to share with you guys. This is the Leather Cowboy right here, Premier Leather Crafters in the Dirty South. I'll see you guys on the other side. Keep crafting.